Okay, so this afternoon, I'm going to talk briefly about uh, the pipeline of investments that we have planned for PNG um, over the next three years. Next slide, please. So um, ADB's portfolio currently stands at approximately $2 billion um, with a focus on transport, energy, and the health sector. Um, this portfolio has grown rapidly over the last 10 years, uh, principally through a, a modality we call the MFF, the multi-tranche financing facility. Um, and um, in, in the, the makeup of the portfolio, uh, transport is by far the largest uh, sector in which we work. It's approximately 51%, uh, followed by, by health and public sector management which combined now, now equate to about 39%. What's, what's interesting about this actually, um, I know because there is a increased focus in PNG on, on the energy is energy sector used to be our, our second biggest um, uh, share of our portfolio, but, but has fallen off relative to uh, the work we've been doing in the health and, and the public sector management uh, fields. Um, however, we hope to have a new energy project that I'll talk about shortly uh, to uh, bring our, the share of our work in the energy sector back up. Um, why, why have we increased in the health in the public sector management sector? Well, these, these, are, these have been quite in demand. Uh, we've been quite successful in working with the Ministry of Health in Papua New Guinea on uh, developing community uh, health posts. And, and indeed district hospitals, um, that, has, has, that project was combined with a, a policy-based loan where we gave budget support to the government uh, in exchange for policy reforms in the health sector. And then um, last year, we also supplied $250 million in budget, in budget support to mitigate the effects of COVID-19. And um, and um, we have also embarked upon a very, very interesting project, the, another policy-based loan uh, focused on the reform of state-owned enterprises. And we kicked that project off last year and provided $100 million in budget support. And we are working this year to provide another $150 million uh, in budget support. Under the SOE reform, that, that, uh, that, that amount of budget support is given for the for the government's uh, reform actions uh, with respect to how the state-owned enterprises are governed and and how they operate. Next slide, please. Um, these so we work under um, three three central ADB. We we work under three central planning documents. Uh, we have a corporate strategy from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty thirty um, that looks at the institution in general and very high level uh, topics. Um, and then for each project, for each country, we have a separate uh, country partnership strategy. And that strategy is usually for a four or five year period. And last year, we completed a new country partnership strategy for PNG, uh, which envisages that we will be lending about $2.5 billion uh, over the course of that strategy. And again, that, that strategy is, it is a strategy document. It's a, it's a high level uh, document that, that talks about uh, impacts and, and outcomes. And then each year we typically produce a country operations business plan. And that is resultant from a um, country programming mission that we usually conduct in February to April, May. And in that document, that's where it's a very short document. It's only about 10, 12 pages. That document actually shows the funding we have available and where we have, um, where, where that, those sectors and those projects, where that funding is earmarked to go. And um, those discussions are held with Treasury, with planning, with the Prime Minister's office, and with the executing agencies. Now, even though we have these three planning documents, and, and, and the like, all of our strategies are aligned with the medium-term development plan of the government of PNG. 
and are linked to achieving the sustainable development goals. Uh, so for, um, uh, well, let me just, for the, the country partnership strategy and the country operations business plan are both available online and um, I, can, I can cut and paste the links to those and, and, and send them across um, here in this forum for everyone to see and to access um, if, if possible. Um, and then just for the, this uh, current country operations business plan, I would like to say that we have an indicative amount of lending uh, available. And so for the period of 2021 to 2023, this is set at approximately $800 million uh, in, in terms of uh, the loans we have available, both under concessional lending and our, our ordinary capital reserves. Uh, I say that because our concessional lending is at a very, very low rate. And then our ordinary capital reserves is, is a rate that used to be tied to the, uh, the London interbank overnight rate. But that's we're moving away from that, but but uh, to a different U.S. base overnight rate, the the, the Fed overnight rate, basically. Um, but even so, um, that that rate is quite quite low, as, as compared to rates that one would get from uh, commercial private sector banks. Next slide, please. So, um, in our largest sector, we have we have three new major road projects that are being prepared under what we've called a transport sector preparatory project. Uh, we have the Northern Regional Road Corridor project um, in, uh, along the northern coast of the country, uh, basically going all the way to the Indonesian border. Then we have the Highlands Region Road Improvement Investment Project Phase 2. This builds on work that we have already done in the Highlands in terms of uh, regional feeder roads. And of course, it links to the ongoing work that we're doing on the Highlands Highway. And then lastly, um, we have the Trans Island Highway project that is intended to connect um, Port Moresby to Lay. And um, on that project, we are, we are uh, cooperating with uh, the new Australian Infrastructure Financing Facility for the Pacific uh, that, that Robert is, is gonna represent when he comes up next. Now, this, uh, this facility that we're preparing these projects under is a relatively new concept. Um, in years past, we had a relatively small amount of funding to prepare projects. And sometimes that resulted in uh, inadequate designs and uh, engineering designs, designs of procurement documents and the like, and that ended up resulting in delays. And so we've, we've come up with a, a new concept called the, the uh, Project Readiness Facility. And um, last year, the government agreed with us on, on this facility. And so under this facility, we are doing the detailed engineering design, um, all of the uh, environmental and social due diligence, required for these for these roads in advance um, so that we would not experience the same delays um, that we have experienced in, in previous projects. Um, let me talk about each of these projects a little bit more in depth. So the Northern Region Road Corridor project is being structured as a, a, as a MFF using a time, slice, time slicing approach. Um, and so that what that means is we will we will break off part of the project uh, first, and then a second part, and then a third part to to keep it manageable. So the project is being prepared for a total amount of of approximately 1.2 billion dollars. Phase one is due to cover the road section from Watong to Wewak, and um, and then um, the next phase will cover Wewak to Angaram, and, um, and then the remaining phases will cover the sections from Angaram to Medang. Um, it's envisaged that this work will, will take approximately 10 years to do. Of course, um, whether this all comes to fruition or not will depend on the due diligence that, that we're embarking on now. Uh, the next project, the Highlands 
Region Road Improvement Investment Project Phase 2 is also being structured as a multi-tranche financing facility with three tranches. And a, we, we're estimating an approximate value of, of $720 million. Um, the idea here is, again, to connect uh, Highland communities, uh, principally west of Mount Hagen, to the Highlands Highway. And then the last project, which is um, which is 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 probably a game changer. Is I, th I think uh, one of the previous speakers mentioned that uh, there's no current uh, overland road connection from Lay to Port Moresby. Um, currently, is this this project will change all that. And um, and so we have um, we're thinking uh, we will end up doing about fifty percent of that, and the AIFP was do about fifty percent of it that. And uh, so we're going to work together on this one, and um, I think it'll be a very difficult project because, um, unlike some of the other projects, there is no existing road here, and so it's um, it's going to take a lot of concerted effort. Um, next slide, please. Um, so some of our existing projects. So uh, we have approved tranche two of the, of the Highlands Highway project. Um, I think we're at the final stages of procurement. Um, the tranche two will um, we'll construct um, 71 bridges. So we, currently most of the bridges on the Highlands Highway are, are, are old, outdated, single lane Bailey bridges. So we will, we will be destruct, constructing new deck bridges uh, with dual lanes. Um, I think uh, we just had a team actually who traveled from uh, Garoka, which is about midway in the Highlands Highway to Lay just yesterday. And I think we're making uh, significant progress on tranche one, which is tranche one was rehabilitating the pavement. Um, so, I think we're about 50% uh, physical completion currently. Um, overall, some sections are more difficult than others on the Highlands Highway. There is one section uh, to the west of Garoka where there's significant uh, movement in, in geotech formations and, and that is, is very difficult. But uh, again, I think uh, it started slow back in 2018, but it is significantly accelerated and um, and we look forward to moving forward with the construction of new bridges uh, next year. Um, the other project to, worth mentioning is uh, we are just completing um, an MFF called the Civil Aviation, Aviation Sector Development Investment Project, CADIC. Um, this project, this investment program, it originally started in uh, 2010 and is, is nearing completion. Um, in fact, it will end on the 21st of November of this year. There will be no extension. Um, we have these MFFs usually have a, a 10 year uh, life to them. And, and actually on this one, we've already extended it and we cannot extend it again. Um, so we have, it has been a very successful project. It had, uh, aside from the physical infrastructure, it, it improved air aviation safety to, to ensure it met um, international civil aviation organization standards so that uh, PNG's airspace could remain open. And um, it also has uh, restructured the aviation sector uh, in terms of uh, institutions. Uh, I think uh, back when the project started, there may have been one or two institutions uh, carrying out various tasks, and today we have five. Um, Phase, phase two of the project will continue on uh, with the work that, that, that the original investment project started. I mean, we, we still, I guess what we say is the, the work is not totally finished. There's continued demand for um, upgrade of, of facilities and um, not just on the, the 21 or so major airports, but also on remote uh, rural airstrips. Um, so we are waiting to um, have a final agreement on the scope of this project, and this has to be agreed upon by these five institutions that, that I was mentioning, but namely the National Airports Corporation, and planning, and treasury. 
And uh, once that's done, then I think we can move forward with this project. I would anticipate uh, this project would be ready for approval in 2022. Next slide, please. Um, now for this year, we, we have a, a project prepared uh, to support the energy sector. This is the power sector development program. Um, this project has been in, in the making for a number of years. Um, maybe uh, at first we didn't have the design quite right, but I think we've, we've uh, been working closely with uh, PPL and I think we've, we've got something that is, will provide value for money for, for the people and the government of PNG and, and indeed the state and enterprise PPL. Um, what this project aims to do is it's, it's about transmission and distribution. It will be providing uh, transmission lines, substations, and distribution to the Palm Grid, the Ramu Grid, and the Gazelle Grid. Um, now, we, we are hoping that this project will be approved uh, this year, and uh, so we can start to move forward uh, with implementation of the works early next year. Um, after that, we're also uh, looking to develop a clean energy development project. Um, so I, I have just, uh, as part of our team in uh, Port Moresby, we have just hired a new international energy specialist who is, is getting up to speed and, and he will be uh, assessing the sector needs uh, in concert with our development partners and uh, seeing what we can carve out in terms of uh, a clean energy development program. Um, as, as already mentioned, um, we, we embarked upon a very ambitious project at the request of Prime Minister Marape uh, back in 2019. And uh, last year we were able to get the first sub-program of this $500 million program approved. So last year was subprogram one um, for a hundred million dollars. And, and we have intentionally designed this uh, so that the amount of budget support increases over time. Uh, but in so doing, the reforms are, are to become more difficult to achieve as well. So what are these reforms? These are reforms, uh, the policy and legislative framework uh, for which the SOEs um, operate, governance and transparency, uh, such as uh, merit-based merit hiring, and, and we want to see uh, better gender diversity in management of the SOEs and increased financial performance and, and transparency of their operations. Um, this, um, this program, we see this program as being critical for supporting the infrastructure work that, that we do, uh, whether in, in roads or the energy sector or the aviation sector, because uh, in PNG, um, these sectors tend to be the, the, the operated by, by the, by the state-owned enterprises. These state-owned enterprises are, are more or less uh, monopolies, monopoly service providers and, and uh, we need to see uh, better value for money in the services they provide. The services should be cheaper and the people should, should achieve better quality services. Um, we've received strong commitment from the government uh, for these policy actions. Uh, and, um, and we're working really hard uh, this year to um, get a few more of these policy reform actions over the line. Uh, one of them is the uh, NEC approval of the of the PPP Act, the Public Private Partnership Act, um, and um, and we're almost there. And I think uh, I think we should be in in good shape to um, to get this project approved this year. Next slide, please. Um, additionally, we are, we also have have uh, we also engage in the private sector. Um, we have a long, long-term ongoing uh, engagement called the Private Sector Development Initiative. Um, this looks to uh, create a more enabling environment for private sector investment. This is a facility that is actually run out of our Sydney office. 
and it's it's largely uh, technical assistance, meaning that there's no loans um, f out of this out of this work. Rather, it is it is uh, grants essentially, but it's it's work that we do uh, on behalf of, of the government with with their direction, um, and it's and this facility is largely funded by the government of Australia and the government of New Zealand. Um, and so that 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 PSDI is is working on on these things such as drafting uh, improved legislation or other things that um, that would support uh, the investment and development of, of private sector uh, enterprises. Um, we also have a a new project uh, which the executing agency will be the Bank of PNG. This is improving financial access and entrepreneurship project. Um, this is scheduled for board approval um, in 2021. It's, it's for $30 million. And it, it builds on a previous project that we had about financial inclusion that supported uh, capacity building and, and teaching people about having access to, 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 to the banks and to financial markets. Um, but this one takes it up a, a bit more. And so this project is about improving financial access and entrepreneurship capabilities of not only households, but micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. Um, and uh, so we're very keen to, to get this project off the ground too. Uh, this project is not quite ready yet, but, but we're, we're estimating that the design will be finished in quarter four of this year. And, and I think it will probably slip till until next year for approval. Um, one other uh, thing I wanted to mention here about uh, the private sector is we have another um, window of funding available. So most of what I've been talking about already is our sovereign window where we uh, design projects for lending to the government. But we also have a non-sovereign window where we, we can lend to uh, private sector entities. Um, the rates are not as good as our sovereign window, but, but uh, and, we do, and we don't want to crowd out uh, private sector financing. But nonetheless, there are cases and, and times where the risk or the environment is, is such that the private sector um, lending facilities, commercial banks, don't want to take the risk. So um, that's where we'll step in. Um, so we've made a, a $10 million equity investment in the Kena Bank. That was back in December 2019. And um, we recently made a $25 million equity investment in ATH, Almagated Telecom Holdings uh, Limited in 2020. This was to support competition in the telecommunications sector. Um, we're considering further providing support to the Kena Bank um, to acquire um, assets of other banks that may be leaving uh, the market. And uh, we're also pro providing training for women entrepreneurs under a woman entrepreneur finance initiative. And uh, we, are, we are open to exploring options uh, to uh, yep. funding uh, LNG investment as well. Uh, and we have been uh, under under this uh, window as well. We have been appointed as the um, as the PPP uh, transaction advisors for Jackson's International Airport. It's really a shame we had done a lot of uh, uh, financial soundings and, and analysis, and um, I think we were just about ready to go to the market and see who would be interested in coming in and operating Jackson's for say a 20 or 30 year period, um, which would ease the pressure off NAC. It might make things a little bit more competitive in the aviation sector. And uh, then COVID hit. Uh, so this project's on the back burner for now. But um, I do think that if there is going to be a uh, viable uh, or an, a, an example of Vanguard PPP project in, in PNG, um, I think it Jackson's might be a, a one of the you know might be the best one to go with first to to work out how how these types of arrangements should work 
in PNG between the government and, and the private sector. 